Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the 1 to 100 player, Delicious, designed by Steve Finn and Eduardo Bariff, and published by Pencil First Games, who helps sponsor this video. Sure, you've got fruits and vegetables to plant, but with so many containers to put them in and possible arrangements, you're going to have a lot of choices to make. So get your gardening gloves, grab your pencils, and join me at the table as we learn how to play. To set up, give each player a garden sheet, play sheet, and one of the four included pencils. You know what, actually playing with garden gloves is probably not a good idea. In this video, we're going to set up for two players, but if you have more than four players, just supply a few extra pencils. And if you ever run out of sheets, you can find more to print off for free at the Pencil First Games website, and I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. The cards with this back are the vegetable cards, which you'll shuffle into a face-down deck, and then, without looking at them, remove six of the cards, returning them to the box unseen. The remaining vegetables are split into two decks of 12 cards each that you'll arrange in a column, assigning one as the top deck and the other as the bottom, which you'll indicate with these markers. Here are the circular fruit and tool tokens, which you'll put into the included bag, setting it nearby, along with this jar of honey card. I'll also mention, I've cut out this piece of foam core to put the sheets on top of, so I have a hard writing surface during this video, because my table has a bit of a soft surface, actually, just to make it easier to pick up cards and things from it. Otherwise, that's the setup. In Delicious, you and the other players will be picking cards and tokens from a central display showing various vegetables and fruits that you can plant in your garden. And you'll score points in a variety of ways based on how you arrange them. Have the most points by the end of the game, and you win. Now you have both a play and garden sheet. And before we get into the rules of the game, I should give you a quick tour of your garden. This has various empty white spaces for putting fruits and vegetables into. And then these spaces are grouped into containers. And there are six different containers that are only for vegetables. And then over here we have one big planter just for fruits. And I want to point out this container because if you look closely, the artwork makes it look like there's two separate boxes. But this is one container. Also notice, the vegetable containers have these borders dividing them into a top area with three containers, and the other three containers are in what is known as the bottom area. The fruits planter is considered one big area. It doesn't have a top and bottom. Okay, the tour is over. Now let's learn the rules. The game is played over a series of 12 rounds, and each round begins with preparing the community supply. To do this, have any player reveal the top vegetable cards from each of the two decks, setting them face up beside the deck that they came from. Now draw a token from the bag for each card, and these will show a colorful fruit symbol on one side and a gray tool on the other. As you place a token on its vegetable card, check the symbol in the bottom corner here. If it's a colorful fruit symbol, make sure the token has its fruit side face up. If it shows this gray toolbox symbol, flip the token to its tool side. What's important to understand at this point is that a vegetable showing on the card in the top position is meant to be put into one of the containers in the top portion of your garden, while a vegetable showing on the bottom position is meant to go into one of the bottom containers. And we'll see how this happens in a moment. With the community supply set up, it's time for the filling the gardens part of the round, which is broken into two steps, starting with choosing plants. Here, both players will simultaneously pick one of these four symbols to resolve, marking off the leftmost empty space beside it. Now, we'll go through what each of these symbols mean in a moment. But in general, these will tell you which and how many vegetable cards you'll get to use during this round. As the game continues and you fill in more and more of these circles, if all of the circles beside a symbol have been filled in, then you cannot choose that option for the rest of the game. And since there are 12 circles in total, that means after 12 rounds, you'll have filled in all of these circles. If you choose this symbol known as one card as is, then you pick either of the face-up vegetables. But the vegetable you pick must go into the area of the garden it's meant to go in. So if I pick this mushroom, it would have to go into one of my bottom containers. If I pick the carrot, it would have to go into a top container. On the other hand, if I choose this symbol, known as one card reversed, I still pick only one of the vegetables, but I must add it to the opposite position. That means if I pick this top carrot, 
I'd have to add it to one of my bottom containers. This symbol means two curds as is. So I get both vegetables, but they must each go into the area of my garden they're meant to. So the carrot would go into the top and the mushroom would go into the bottom. And that leaves us with this two cards anywhere symbol. Here, we get both cards as well, but we can use them anywhere, putting both of them into the top of my garden or both into the bottom or one in each. As I mentioned, each player will be marking their chosen circle simultaneously. And while you don't have to announce your choice, after everyone has marked their sheets, the choices are available for anyone to see. And with that step done, it's time for the next step, sketching plants. Here, you look at the card or cards that you chose based on the plant choice that you made. For example, here, I'm gonna be using both cards, keeping them as is. Planting this vegetable into one of my top containers and this one into one of my bottom containers. And I don't remove these from the display because the other players get to use these cards as well based on the plant choice that they made. For example, my opponent here will plant one of those vegetables into the area it's meant to go in because they chose this circle. That said, to make things a little easier to follow, I'm gonna have these two cards set beside my sheet as I talk about them. As we see, these will show a vegetable, and you'll also use any token found on the cards you've chosen. So really, I have four different things to resolve here. The two cards and the two tokens. And you can resolve these in any order, but we'll start with the vegetables first. There are six different types of vegetables you'll find on the cards. Lettuce, mushroom, onion, pepper, broccoli, and carrot. Each vegetable you have must be added into a space of one of your containers. This is also known as potting the vegetable. And we'll start with the carrot, which must go into a top container because of the plant choice that we made. Right now we can pick any one of these three containers, but that won't always be the case as we'll soon see, because there are some key rules about adding a vegetable to a space. First, Spaces within a container must be always filled in from the bottom up. So to begin, I must pick an empty space on a bottom row. This means I could draw my carrot into any one of these spaces. Once all of the spaces within a container's bottom row have been filled in, then you can pot vegetables onto the spaces of the row above it, and so on. Now let's say I decide I want to pot my carrot here. To do this, draw a carrot in that space, and you'll find examples of how to draw all the various fruits and vegetables right here on your play sheet, and even on the back of the rule book in more detail if you want. Now, I'm doing this upside down, so please don't judge my carrot too harshly. Also, if you don't feel like drawing, you can just write the letter for that vegetable instead. In the case of a carrot, it's a capital C. Now I need to pot my mushroom, and it must go into a bottom container, so maybe I'll put it here. Over the course of the game, you're going to get additional vegetables to pot, so I'm going to add a few more vegetables to my sheet so I can show you how this will affect things later. Let's say I had these vegetables already in my containers from prior rounds, and that these were the two vegetables in the display, and that my plant choice for this round had been to pick one of them that I must pot in the reverse area. If I pick this pepper on the bottom row, that I must add it to a top container because of the reverse option I picked. However, every container has conditions about the combinations of vegetables that can be added to it. This symbol means that every space in its container must be a different vegetable type. That means I can't add my pepper here since this container already has a pepper that I added earlier. This container symbol means that within each of its rows, it needs a pair of matching vegetables. This means the only thing I could add here is another carrot. Now, a pepper could go here or here later to start a new pair, but we know you can't begin on a higher row until the row beneath it is complete. Now, this symbol means that all of the spaces in its container must contain the same type of vegetable. So if I put my pepper here, then all of these other spaces can only have peppers added to them later, so I'll want to keep that in mind. In the bottom area, we have the same types of conditions, but different combinations of spaces within the containers. So to summarize, when adding vegetables to your garden, you must fill in the spaces from the bottom up, and you must follow the rules for the container you're adding them to. And why are we doing this? For points. As we'll see at the end of the game, you'll score the points shown beside the highest row you've completely filled with vegetables in each of your containers. 
So currently, this container is worth two points. But adding vegetables to your containers isn't your only option. You may instead add a vegetable you've gained to this square wild or bonus spot. And for these two spaces, it doesn't matter whether or not the vegetable was in the top or bottom position. If you sketch a vegetable into the wild spot, you then pick any one of the six vegetables and add it to any one of your containers following the other normal rules, meaning you have to fill them in from bottom to top and of course obey the individual container rules. But it really can be any vegetable. It doesn't have to be the one that you used to fill in this space. So although I put a pepper here, I might then go and fill in a carrot here. If you instead add a vegetable you've gained to this bonus spot, then that means at the end of the game, you'll gain two points for every one of your containers that has at least one drawing of that vegetable. And that covers adding vegetables to your garden. But when you pick a vegetable, you also resolve the fruit or tool token that's on it. The tokens have two sides, but as we saw, they're placed with the side face up on the card that matches the symbol here. This is a fruit symbol, so this will have the fruit side face up, and once placed, they're not changed. And we'll start by explaining how fruits work. With these, you take note of the type of fruit showing on the token and the shape of the outline around this symbol on the card. As you can see here, there are three possible outline shapes, a hexagon, an oval, or a star. To plant a fruit, you add it to any empty space on your planter that has the matching outline as shown on the card that it was paired with. So I could draw this fruit onto any one of these five star outlined spaces. And remember, it doesn't matter whether the fruit token was on a top or bottom vegetable card, only the shape of the outline matters. As we'll see at the end of the game, you'll score points for the patterns of fruits you fill into your planter. But adding a fruit to your planter isn't your only option. You can instead sketch a fruit into this circle wild or bonus spot. Adding a fruit to this wild space means that you must immediately pick any one type of fruit, this or even a different one, and add it to any open space in your fruit planter. Adding a fruit to this bonus space means that at the end of the game, you'll earn one point for each fruit of that type in your planter. Instead of a fruit, you may find a tool symbol face up on a vegetable card you chose, and resolving a tool lets you add any one fruit or any one vegetable to your garden, and the shape of the space it goes into doesn't matter. Instead, the item you choose to plant must go into a row or column which has a matching tool symbol on one end of it. So in this example, I have a garden shovel. And that means I could add any one fruit to any one empty space in this column that has a shovel here at the top. It works the same way if you instead choose to plant a vegetable with your tool token. And again, it can be any one vegetable you want, but keep in mind you still have to fill empty spaces in from the bottom up, and the type of vegetable you choose still needs to satisfy the container's requirements. Vegetables have one other restriction. You still have to pick a container from either the top or bottom based on the plant choice you made and the card the tool was on. For example, if my plant choice had been one vegetable reversed and I picked this card, I would have to use a shovel symbol from one of the top containers. That means I'd have to pick this row and the first space is already filled in, so I would have to fill my vegetable here. And let's say I decide to draw a carrot since I'm getting pretty good at drawing carrots upside down now. No matter where you use the tool, after, cross out the tool icon in the column or row that you used as a reminder that you can't use that tool in that row or column again. And that's how you add vegetables and fruits and use tools. And in rare cases, you may be unable to pot a vegetable or plant a fruit or use a tool that you've selected. And if so, you just ignore those elements. Now, once all of the players have chosen and finished sketching their plants, the round ends and you now follow just a few steps to clean up and prepare for the next round. First, all of the players check to see if any of them managed to fill in all of the spaces within any of their containers. Now, this likely won't happen after the first round, but it could happen for one of the smaller containers. Either way, players who have finished a container will then announce which one they completed. For example, I might say, I finished the bottom right container. I then fill in this check mark here 
and so would any other player who also completed this container during the same round. All players who haven't must now cross this related check mark out, meaning they won't gain the checkbox if they finish this container later. Also, at the end of a round, if any player or players were the first to completely fill in all of the containers in either the top or bottom areas. For example, if it was later in the game and a player's sheet looked like this, where they had filled in all of the spaces in the bottom containers, then they would circle this three-point score, along with any other players who also completed either area during the same round. But every other player must then cross this value out. During setup, we place this honeypot card to remind you of this bonus, and after the bonus has been claimed by one or more players, then you add this card to an area known as the compost pile as a reminder that no one else can earn those three points later. The next step at the end of a round is to move the two revealed cards and their tokens to the compost pile as well. At this point, if there are no face down cards left, the game ends. Otherwise, you'll reveal two new cards from the top of each deck and then add tokens to them as we saw earlier and continue the next round. Now though, let's assume the decks are empty and it's the end of the game. That means it's time to calculate the final scores. Do this by flipping your play sheet over and following the steps shown here, starting with scoring your top and bottom containers. As we mentioned earlier, each container will score points based on its highest row that is completely filled in. So this container will score 12 points, but this one only scores two. Also, if the container has a check mark that you filled in, you gain a bonus point for that container. So this one actually scores 12 plus one or 13. And you write that score here into the circle beside that container. Follow this process for each of your vegetable containers and total the top and bottom containers separately, putting their scores in the related top two lines here. Then it's time to score your fruit planter. Here you only score rows or columns with at least three fruits. So a row like this scores nothing. If the row or column contains fruits of the same type, you score as many points as those fruits in that line, but there can't be any spaces or other fruits between any of them, though spaces or different fruits on the ends don't matter. For example, here I have three strawberries, but it's broken up by this blueberry in the middle, so this row scores nothing. On the other hand, I have four blueberries here, all in a row, unbroken, so that will score me four points, which you mark into the circle at the end of that line. You can also score points if a line has three or more different types of fruits, as long as it isn't broken by empty spots or matching fruits. So in this column, we have one, two, three different fruits, but in the middle, there are two matching fruits, so this scores nothing. On the other hand, this row is made up of three uninterrupted different fruits, so this row will score me some points. This top row shows the scoring for different fruits. So three different fruits scores one point, four different fruits scores two, and five different fruits scores three. A line can have a mix of both same and different fruits that could score. For example, here we have three of the same, but also three different. And in a case like this, you pick just one of those groups to score for that line. Now you score your vegetable bonus if you filled this space in. And you'll earn two points for each of your containers that has at least one drawing of the vegetable you chose to put here. So I put an onion and that means I'll score two, four, six, eight points. Next, you score your fruit bonus if you filled this space in, earning one point for every fruit of that type you have in your planter. So for me, I filled in a blueberry, so I'll earn one, two, three, four, five bonus points. Finally, you also score three points if you earn the jar of honey bonus, which you'll have circled here. Then add up all of your points and the player with the most points wins. In the case of a tie, the tied player who earned the most points from their fruit planter wins. And if there's still a tie, the tied player who marked the most of these first potter bonus icons wins. And if there's still a tie, the tied players share the victory. I also want to point out the game can be played remotely with friends online using just one copy of the game. And if you'd like to try that, you'll find it explained here in the rule book. The game also comes with rules and components for solo play described in this rule book, which I'll leave for you to discover on your own.
But otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play Delicious. If you have any questions at all about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at Board Game Geek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get notification anytime we post a new video. And if you'd like to support us directly, you can join our Patreon team, which I'll have linked below. But until next time, thanks for watching.